Welcome to the 2020 annual meeting of the High Point Economic Development Corporation. My name is Lauren Hill, and I'm fortunate to be the president. This annual meeting may be virtual for the first time, but like our previous in-person meetings, we're going to learn, celebrate, and tour a prominent High Point business today. We will hear from officials from Omada, our host, Lacey Beasley, who was our annual meeting featured speaker a year ago, graciously agreed to join us again this year to talk about how retail has changed since we last heard from her. Chris Rivera will report on the work and mission of the Guilford County Workforce Board. We will recap the major projects and announcements since our last annual meeting, and we will mark the five-year anniversary of the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. I'm pleased to introduce Carlos Olvera, who runs Surf Pro of High Point. He wears two economic development hats this year. He's the chair of the High Point EDC, and he's also the 2020 chair of the leadership group of the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carlos Olvera. Ladies and gentlemen, I call to order the 2020 annual meeting of the High Point Economic Development Corporation. What a year 2020 has been for the High Point EDC, for our city, county, region, and our state and nation. Let's review the year from a board and staff perspective. Despite the challenges and changes in how things have had to be handled, the High Point EDC staff, the Guilford Economic Development Alliance, our elected officials, and senior city and county staff have worked hard together on bringing new jobs and new investments. We will hear more about those successes in a few minutes. This year, we have had five EDC board meetings at local businesses. We meet on the road oftentimes so that we can learn about the many different industry sectors of the High Point business community. In February 2020, we met at Aetna in Northern High Point which had announced a big expansion in 2019. Edna has more than 842 employees in High Point. It is now a business unit of CVS Health. In March 2020, we met at the business of our board member, Chris Weitzel. New Path Digital, which recently moved to downtown High Point, is a digital marketing and advertising agency. In August, we met virtually at Splashworks, which opened this year in downtown High Point. Splashworks makes home accent lifestyle products. In September, we met virtually at Drake's Fresh Pasta Company in Southern High Point. That food manufacturer makes Parla Pasta a well-known brand of the company. And today, of course, we are getting together virtually on Amada's manufacturing campus in Northern High Point. During the year, we welcomed interim High Point City Manager, Randy McCaslin, as a board member of the High Point EDC. He had also served on the High Point EDC board in 2014 and 2015, the first time he was the interim city manager. Randy has long been an asset for the city of High Point and certainly has always supported our EDC staff members. Leaving the High Point EDC board earlier this year was outgoing city manager, Greg Demko. He routinely and publicly gave shout outs to the High Point EDC staff for their talents, abilities, and successes. A few years back, Greg instructed our staff to add retail recruitment to their office slash industrial efforts. I know High Point EDC involvement in retail has been a good thing for our city. Thank you, Greg, for your service to the city and our board. I appreciate your support of our staff. Five other board members will be rotating off the end of this year. So this is their last board meeting. I'd like to express my appreciation to these outgoing High Point EDC board members. Dr. Latanya Bailey of Bailey Orthodontics has been our first vice chair this year, even as she has served as 2020 president of North Carolina Dental Society. Bruce Davis of Kid Appeal Learning Center is a former county commissioner who is completing two terms on the High Point EDC board after having been a liaison on our board for two years. Jackie King of McDonald's of High Point, Jamestown and Greensboro is completing two terms on our board. Chris Patrick of Fastenal has served as an officer during his two terms on our board. Royal Wigan of Thayer Coggin has served two full terms and served as an officer for two of those years. 
Thank you to all of our board members who have or will be wrapping up their High Point EDC board service this year. Our very capable High Point EDC staff members have had a very good but unusual year. They have mostly worked remotely since mid-March. The High Point EDC staff is made up of Executive Assistant Penny Westgard, Vice President Marshall Yandel, Executive Vice President Sandy Donbeck, and President Lauren Hill. I thank them for their continued hard work and impressive successes. I also want to give a shout out to the economic development staffers from the Greensboro Chamber who work with our High Point EDC staff through the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. Thanks go to Chamber President Brent Christensen, Business Recruitment Director Barbara West, and Existing Industry Services Director Meredith Berger. Cindy Dancy is our County Alliance Contractor who worked previously for both the High Point EDC and the Greensboro Chamber. Cindy, thank you for all you continue to do for our economic development efforts. Also, I want to express my gratitude to David Ramsey. He left the Greensboro Chamber a couple of months ago for a different job after five years as an integral member of our countywide team. The biggest staff news in 2020 has been that Lauren Hill has announced that effective January 1st, 2021, he will be, quote, redirecting, not retiring from his job as the president of the High Point EDC. We will miss him greatly as he moves on to other ventures. And I'll talk more about that a little later today. At last year's annual meeting, our featured speaker was Lacey Beasley, president of Retail Strategies, which is based in Birmingham, Alabama. Her company works with municipalities to bring retail and restaurant businesses to town. And we are so pleased with her organization helping us here in High Point. Her remarks a year ago were entitled From Boring to Remarkable Reinventing Retail. She wowed the audience with her dynamic presentation and message. With all that's going on in 2020 and how the pandemic has affected retail, we thought it was important to have her with us again this year. Please welcome our next speaker who will talk about two ingredients for High Point's retail survival. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Lacey Beasley. I'm Lacey Beasley, President of Retail Strategies, and it's been an honor partnering with the High Point EDC since 2015 to bring retailers and restaurants to the city of High Point. You as citizens spoke and you said you wanted more places to shop, more places to eat. The city listened and through a partnership with High Point EDC and Electric Cities of North Carolina, the Retail Strategies partnered up and we've all worked together to bring over 40 new retailers and restaurants to the city of High Point. They generate over a million dollars annually in local sales tax collections and have created over 450 new jobs not to mention the quality of life that the citizens have benefited from from these new retailers and restaurants that have opened in High Point. I spoke at this event last year and shared several trends with you that were seen in the retail world, and those have certainly changed over the last 12 month, months with the COVID-19 health crisis and the pandemic. I have a lot of people ask me, what's going on in retail? And the assumptions are that retail is the hardest hit and just dead. Well, really, you have to go in like a surgeon and take a deeper dive on each brand within retail by category, ownership type, and a few other things to determine whether that brand is either thriving or dying. So let's take a look at that. Last year, there were a few stats I shared with you that have changed that I'd like to give you an update on. And then there are other elements that still remain true. So first, one of the shocking stats I shared is that overall retail sales, only 10% of those are conducted online. That's the US Census Bureau number that 10% of overall retail sales are conducted online. We seen that number jump to 16% this year. So that 6% increase we've seen over the last 12 months is more than we saw over the previous decade. So some major changes with online sales. Last year, we had hit an 18 year high in consumer confidence, and that has certainly dropped pretty dramatically. Uh, right now, we're at about 100 points on the index. Um, 
last year, and it was about 140. So we're starting to see consumer confidence bounce back in the third quarter, um, but it's still not at pre-pandemic levels. And consumer confidence matters because that's how what drives people to eat and shop and spend their money. Another thing we looked at was last year, we'd hit a 50 year low in unemployment. And obviously unemployment's been all over the board this year. So last year that low was around 3.5%. Right now we're looking at about 7.9% in unemployment. Um, so that is a number that definitely deserves an asterisk next to it. And we're living in unprecedented times. And there's several records that are being set across the board for all the categories this year. Um, but but it's not as bad as you would have thought with the unemployment rate. So those are a few things that we talked about that have certainly changed this year. But I'll tell you the things that have remained the same. Those brands that were over leveraged in debt had antiquated technology and did not remember their customer, they are still struggling right now. And what this pandemic has done is it's really forced a lot of those brands that were dying a slow death that would have had a natural progression of four to five years down the road before they really had to close. They have been forced to close in the last seven months. So it's expedited that process. And we see this as a positive thing. What it's done is it's freed up a lot of real estate where the good emerging brands that are well capitalized can come into the market and take that prime retail space that was really previously occupied by maybe a tired brand that was ready to be on its way out. So it's a better shopping experience for you as a consumer. Um, so the, there's a lot of shifts and a lot of changes we're seeing in the market right now. And in some regards, you can look at it as a natural pruning process. So retail is not dead, but it is changing. Boring retail is dead. Remarkable retail will come back, will stay alive, and provide us as consumers a better shopping experience. We are unforgiving as consumers. I mean, we are very quick to complain if we don't get exactly the customer service, quality, and price point that we want. And that puts a lot of pressure on these brands. So the key to survival in the future is number one, innovation. Innovation is a key factor. And every retailer out there has what we call the department of no. It is that department that wants to take that low risk and really defend and rely on traditional methods for survival and for profitability for the brand. And those departments of no have been forced into saying yes this year. It's obviously been very expensive for a lot of those retailers. Not only are several of them dealing with a loss of retail sales, they're also dealing with the added expense of innovation. So the brands that were well capitalized and not over leveraged in debt are thriving right now. Uh, so that's important to look at. It's not just overall category specific. It is really gets back into how well ran and capitalized that company was prior to this. And did they have antiquated technology prior to the pandemic and have they updated that since the pandemic. So those brands that cannot update their technology that allows us to have that omni-channeling, seamless integration between our online sales and our brick and mortar experience, those are the ones that are really struggling for survival in the future. So a few categories that are doing very well are grocery, general merchandise, and home improvement. They remain very strong, and several of those saw a large increase in store sales. A lot of the fast food restaurants and those with drive throughs have seen substantial increases in store sales this year, and therefore they're continuing to expand and looking at new locations. Now, when you look at what are some lasting effects of this pandemic and some of the changes we're seeing, the major focus is in restaurants. Uh, restaurants are the most challenged and those most forced to adapt. So a lot of restaurants right now are figuring out how you can uh, shop at that restaurant or buy that what you want through your mobile app 
and then changing their store prototype where in-store dining is shrinking. And if they did not previously have a drive-through solution, they are incorporating that like Shake Shack, even some of these nicer restaurants are incorporating drive-throughs. And the traditional QSRs, quick service restaurants, are doing stalls now. So you can order on the app, pull up to the stall, have a particular number, and they will bring that food out to you. Um, Chick-fil-A is doing a great job of this, and several are following suit. And that is something we will see change from this point forward, is the omni-channeling and how we shop through our phone or our computer. And that's how we purchase either food or any other amenity, goods and services that we would like to buy. Um, last year, we did talk about how we actually as households spend more at restaurants than we do in grocery stores. Well, that has changed this year. And some of the predictions we looked at for the future were what's going to happen with online grocery stores uh, sales. So online grocery sales have skyrocketed. And that's been a very critical and important aspect of this change that will carry into the future. So there's a lot going on and what I would encourage you to do as a community is continue to support local. Spend your dollars at your local brick and mortar businesses, whether that's a mom and pop or a national chain, but go and shop, spend your money there, say what you want for the future. Every time you spend your dollar, you're placing a vote for what you wanna see in the future in the marketplace. So I encourage you to shop High Point and especially focus on those local restaurants. They're the most challenged right now during this pandemic. They need your support. So whether you are buying, uh, constantly eating there through the curbside pickup or in-store dining if, if possible, or even gift cards, please do that. There's some great examples where some people that are very passionate about particular restaurants have left an open tab for healthcare professionals there on a particular day and covering that tab. So it's a great way to work together, really supporting our frontline um, workers who are maintaining our safety and our safety and health during this time. And, and just look at anything you can do that is creative to shop local and support those businesses. Thank you to the city of High Point and the High Point EDC. As you know, you have a fantastic team there. They do very well with the city of High Point. It's an honor to work with Elector Cities of North Carolina and High Point EDC as we continue to grow the community through innovation and shopping local to support the retail and restaurant brands we see now and continue to grow that. We remain very active in conversations with restaurants, grocery stores, Stores, and even some big box retailers. They're looking to backfill that second generation space. So you can help us by shopping local and supporting your community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lacey. Despite the challenging year we have all faced, other than at the very beginning of the pandemic, client activity has been strong for the High Point EDC, the Greensboro Chamber, and the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. We've been pleased with the announcements already made and we're hopeful about landing other major projects soon. In the packet you received by email, you can review the office, industrial, and retail projects of High Point, which were announced since our last annual meeting. You will also see the office and industrial projects in Greensboro and the rest of Guilford County. Let me point out the largest of those projects. In High Point, LL Flex will be creating 46 jobs and investing $7.6 million in a new building. High Pint Brewery and Public House will be opening in a former beauty school building. Investment in the property will exceed $1.5 million. As many as 27 jobs will be created in the first two years. Axo Nobel held a groundbreaking in November 2019 for its new 50,000 square foot building. That building and other improvements on its High Point manufacturing campus will be a $55 million investment by the company. Amata opened two buildings, which you'll learn more about later in today's program. Haynes Brands distribution facility has gone from 75 workers in March 2020 to 450 employees today. Fortuna Enterprises purchased a 65,000 square foot former pharmaceutical facility, 
for its new, larger Triad location. That building will house the company's coffee roasting facility, along with a warehouse, offices, and meeting space. Hunter Commercial Properties announced plans to build a $5.6 million, 75,000 square foot warehouse distribution facility. A Fortune 200 company is working with the developer and could be the tenant. In the non-high point parts of Guilford County, Prepack Manufacturing is a Canadian manufacturer of ready to assemble home furniture. The company selected a Quitsit building to be its new US manufacturing center. Prepack will invest $27 million and create more than 200 new jobs. Publix is constructing its 1,000 employee, $400 million grocery distribution center in Greensboro. The Fresh Market will relocate its corporate headquarters to downtown Greensboro by the end of this year. An historic joint public hearing of the High Point and Greensboro City Councils was held in November 2019, at which each city authorized performance-based incentives to keep the company in the county. Amazon has a last mile distribution facility in High Point that opened in 2019. In 2020, the company opened two more facilities in Guilford County, the 1,000 employee major distribution facility and a last mile facility, both in the Guilford County part of Kernersville. It became public this year that its fourth building in the county will be a last mile delivery facility to be constructed in Whitsitt. FedEx will hire 170 workers for a new distribution center in Whitsitt. Syngenta announced it will retain its 650 high paying jobs in Greensboro in a new facility. Performance based economic incentives were authorized for UPS to expand its distribution center and add 141 jobs. Sunlight Batteries announced that it will assemble and distribute batteries for forklifts at a new Greensboro facility. The company will create 46 jobs and invest $6.5 million. Pactive Corporation, a food packaging manufacturer and distributor, will create 25 new jobs and invest at least $8 million to expand in Greensboro. Intersect Development Group purchased 47 acres at Rock Creek Center in Whitson. Plans are to build a $30 million, 475,000 square foot speculative distribution warehouse. High Point has two projects that are still considering our city. The Bertano Group is considering a $100 million, 120 job project along West Green Drive near downtown. The High Point City Council authorized performance-based incentives for this project. The company and its Opportunity Zone investors are still doing their due diligence and we are hopeful to get a positive decision soon. DC Blocks is considering a major project in High Point. The company would build and operate a multi-tenant data center, which would add $305 million to the local tax base. That would be by far the largest capital investment project in High Point in my 20 years in this job. Both the High Point City Council and the Guilford County Board of Commissioners have authorized performance-based incentives for this project. The company should make its decision whether it is choosing High Point or not around the end of the year. Our fingers are crossed. As I said before, after the annual meeting, be sure to review the packet that was emailed to you to see the longer list of project announcements. Your economic development team has been busy. To land the projects like the ones I've just mentioned, Companies need to be convinced that a community is very involved in and good at handling workforce and training issues. Our next speaker is Chris Rivera, the Executive Director for the Guilford County Workforce Development Board. He began his workforce career in Florida in 2008. He then held several positions elsewhere in North Carolina before coming to Guilford County to be Deputy Director. During the last year, he was promoted to his current position. We are so pleased to have him with us today to talk about Guilford Works, creating opportunities for job seekers and businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chris Rivera. Hello, my name is Chris Rivera, the Executive Director with the Guilford County Workforce Development Board, better known as Guilford Works. We are your public workforce system responsible for employment and training services to transitioning underemployed and underemployed residents throughout Guilford County. 
In addition to these services, our organization supports businesses throughout the county in developing solutions to their workforce needs by way of recruitment assistance, incumbent worker grant opportunities, wage subsidies for new hires, as well as the provision of labor market intelligence, all to ensure that businesses remain competitive in the market and can prosper. I could not be more excited to be speaking with you from one of Guilford County's newest employer sites, Amada America Incorporated. In 2018, the Japanese-owned company selected High Point, North Carolina as its next manufacturing and assembly hub for high-precision press bending equipment for its U.S. market. Amada has committed to bringing more than 200 jobs to the High Point community, which will occupy its 261,000 square foot campus. I have the privilege of standing before you today at Amada's state-of-the-art technical center. This is where the company will further develop our workforce by giving them the skills needed to operate the equipment the company builds. We look forward to partnering with Amada as training and connecting our community to skills that lead to high wage employment opportunities is precisely what our organization does. Needless to say, 2020 has been challenging in a number of ways for businesses and residents throughout our community. We continue to navigate a public health crisis that has disrupted the lives of tens of thousands of workers in Guilford County. Hundreds, if not thousands of businesses have had to either significantly reduce their workforce or even permanently lay off their workers. Many have had to even adjust their models to survive in this new norm of an economy. The pandemic has created an unanticipated economic crisis. We have seen unemployment rates in our community soar as high as 16 to 17%, representing upwards of 44,000 individuals that have been laid off or have had their hours and or income significantly reduced to the point in which they have had to file for unemployment benefits. Even today, we have pockets of our community that continue to struggle, with some experiencing unemployment rates as high as 24 to 25%. Despite these challenges, we continue to witness the resiliency of our community. We have experienced the creativity and businesses shifting practices and ensuring that existing and returning employees may do so safely. Businesses throughout our community have leveraged or invested in innovations and technologies to create space for our workforce to continue to contribute to the economy and remote environments. We have seen municipalities, nonprofits, human and social service agencies and corporate partners alike all step up to raise, collect, and distribute critical resources. The sole purpose of this level of community philanthropy was to ensure that our affected workers, our most vulnerable and at-risk residents, are able to provide for themselves and their families. As we continue to make our way through these health and economic crises, economic and workforce development activities are more important than ever. I'm pleased to say that the Guilford County Workforce Development Board has enjoyed a long and strong working relationship with the High Point Economic Development Corporation, the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce, and the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance, which, by the way, recently celebrated its fifth year of collaborative economic development service to our community. These entities have continued to work diligently throughout this pandemic to attract new businesses to Guilford County and to create employment opportunities for all. We should applaud the creativity of these agencies have applied throughout these challenging times to engage new business prospects, as well as to support the expansion of existing businesses. Our workforce development system has and will continue to create opportunities for job seekers and businesses across the county. We recognize that businesses are consumed with ensuring that they are able to safely return workers to the workplace. Our business services team has developed a series of on-demand webinars for businesses to access for that purpose. We also recognize that our economy continues to improve, businesses will have to consider how to safely recruit talent in a safe manner following CDC guidelines. We have invested in technologies for businesses to leverage and to partner with us to host virtual job fairs. We recently hosted a virtual healthcare job fair in which 10 of our top healthcare employers participated. More than 425 job seekers registered for this virtual event and 200 plus applications were submitted. 
In addition to virtual recruiting opportunities, our workforce system has continued to host open air drive-through job fairs at our two NC Works Career Centers here in Guilford County. This has proven to be an extremely safe and productive way to connect talent to local businesses. By estimation, we have held nearly 40 of these events since July and have been able to provide access to employment opportunities to more than 800 job seekers in our community. We celebrate our employer community for taking advantage of these non-traditional recruitment strategies and thank them for providing employment opportunities to members of our community, even during these challenging times. With more than 30,000 residents still unemployed in our community today, our workforce system continues to explore innovative ways to get information, resources, and services to our job seekers. I hold fast to the belief that people want to return to work. However, for many, that may not be possible at this time. We have to appreciate that it is not an easy proposition for members of our workforce to have to balance childcare and virtual learning needs of school-aged children and go to work. It is understandable one may be hesitant to re-engage in the workforce out of fear of contracting this virus and potentially exposing family and loved ones, despite our every effort being made to keep them safe. We also have to accept the reality that for those that are interested and willing to return to the workforce, they may not be able to do so as a result of restrictions. In all of that, there is a tremendous opportunity for our workforce system to invest in reskilling and upskilling efforts in our community. There is an incredible opportunity to prepare our workforce for the very jobs our economic development partners are working tirelessly to create. To accomplish this, we have formed partnership with Coursera, the world's largest open online course provider, launching Guilford Works on Coursera. This partnership has provided members of our community access to more than 3,000 college and university courses to develop or strengthen their skills. As with all of our services, there is no cost to this resource. Since launching, more than 200 individuals have taken advantage of this learning platform and have collectively taken 275 courses. We are also partnering with Guilford Technical Community College on an upskilling initiative they launched called Operation Workforce Recovery. The program is designed to get people back to work. This initiative provides a pathway for individuals to access short-term training opportunities that lead to high demand jobs in our community. Individuals participating in this initiative stand the opportunity to secure employment in areas such as innovative and advanced manufacturing, healthcare careers such as emergency medical technicians, skilled trades occupations such as HVAC technicians and welding, transportation, warehousing, logistics, which remain strong arteries for our economy. Our organization has allocated additional funds to provide scholarships and supports to those that need to take advantage of short-term training options to become more competitive for employment opportunities as our economy continues to improve. Like many organizations, we have had to modify our operations and limit the number of in-person services that we are able to provide to comply with stay-at-home and safer-at-home orders. The following steps are being taken to ensure that we're able to continue delivering vital services and resources. We have deployed virtual access to our talent development and employment consultant teams. We've created online networking and mentoring groups. We've also digitized all of our workshops to ensure customers can participate remotely. We've expanded the bandwidth of our Wi-Fi to allow customers to park in our parking lots and use our facilities as a hotspot. We have leveraged texting to distribute information and connect our customers to resources. And moreover, we continue to explore safe ways to mobilize employment and training services directly within communities throughout Guilford County. Needless to say, getting our community back to work is our highest priority. Yes, we know our economy is recovering slower than we would hope, and we continue to be in a space of unknown. Our community should take solace in knowing your economic development and workforce development organizations are working hard to grow our economy through supporting new and existing businesses, as well as developing a skilled workforce that is able to achieve economic mobility and contribute to our economy in meaningful ways. It has been an honor to speak with you today. Thank you for the opportunity to share what's happening in Guilford County. 
Please stay safe and healthy. A historic gathering took place five years ago this month. A joint meeting of the High Point City Council, Greensboro City Council, and the Guilford County Board of Commissioners. At that November 2015 meeting, elected leaders voted to create the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. All but one of those 27 local elected officials were in favor of the Alliance proposal. Those three governments, plus a High Point EDC, the Greensboro Chamber, were closely in that alliance. How did our alliance come together? Guilford County Manager Marty Lawing got the ball rolling when he quite rightly asked why we had two separate economic development groups in the county. Two groups that didn't always work closely together. His question got community leaders to get together to discuss how to handle things. In the fall of 2014, a dedicated group began discussing how to improve countywide economic development efforts. That group included the Guilford County Commissioner's Chair, the Mayors of High Point and Greensboro, the Guilford County Manager, the City Managers of Greensboro, and High Point, the Chairs and Chairs-Elect of the High Point EDC and Greensboro Chamber, and the High Point Partners Chair. In June 2015, Greensboro Chamber President Brent Christensen and the High Point EDC President Lauren Hill proposed to that group a collaboration among their two economic development groups that would have oversight by the three governments. The alliance setup that we have enjoyed for five years. At our annual meeting in 2016, Ken Smith, who was then the High Point EDC Chair said, sometimes it takes a change in personalities to affect transformational change like the change that led to the creation of the GCEDA. As Smith said, Marty Loyne was the relatively new Guilford County manager looking at things from a new perspective. Greg Demko became High Point City Manager during this time, and he was willing to consider new possibilities. Brent Christensen began as president of the Greensboro Chamber in June 2015. Coming from out of state, Brent had no history of the two cities not always working well together. He had no preconceived notions. He immediately worked closely with the High Point EDC. But as Ken Smith said, cooperation could not come about one-sided from only the Greensboro Chamber side. The High Point team also had to be open to it in order to make it work. Smith said then that President Lauren Hill and Executive Vice President Sandy Dunbeck were open to countywide collaboration right away. They embraced it. Fast forward five years. We have done so well working together to bring jobs and investment to Guilford County. And the GCEDA has been internationally recognized twice for their efforts. In 2016, the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance earned an award both for the efforts that led to its creation and for the way it is set up. The award was for regionalism and cross-border collaboration from the International Economic Development Council. Again this year, GCEDA has won the Regionalism and Cross-Border Collaboration Award from the International Economic Development Council. The 2020 award being announced today for the first time has been presented to the GCEDA for its members' unique team effort to retain the Fresh Market Headquarters. The award was presented to the GCEDA just a few days ago. Ladies and gentlemen, had we been able to meet in person today, we would have had a big birthday cake for everyone to help celebrate these past five amazing years of the County Alliance. But until we can meet in person to celebrate, I ask you to do several things. First, please feel good about how GCEDA has impressively enhanced local economic development efforts. Next, remember that this Alliance has worked far better over the last five years than any of us had dreamed possible. And finally, please thank the elected officials senior county and city staff and economic developers who are making this effort continue to work smoothly. I am so proud to be serving as the GCEDA chair this year. It is always worthwhile and exciting for elected officials, board members, and the community to learn about local companies. Today, we are pleased to put a spotlight on Amada and its manufacturing and technical center campus in High Point. There's no better person to begin that virtual tour than Sandy Dunbeck, the Executive Vice President of the High Point Economic Development Corporation. 
As you will hear, she has worked with Amada throughout the recruitment, convincing, announcing, celebrating, opening, and operating phases. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sandy Dunbeck. Without a doubt, one of the most important and exciting economic development projects on which I've worked has been Amada. Today, I'm here on this impressive and high-tech Amada campus in Northern High Point, which is at the corner of Amada Drive and Penny Road in the Premier Center Business Park. The Japanese headquartered company is investing more, most likely considerably more, than 125 million in its High Point campus when all phases are completed. Amada is a manufacturer of a full line of precision sheet metal fabricating equipment. That equipment serves the automotive and appliance markets. This is exactly the type of project we economic developers have been working hard to recruit to our area. Amada will create at least 201 jobs in High Point, such as engineers, production control staff, production managers, assemblers, machine operators, welders, quality control staff, and administrative jobs. I have been proud to be a part of the company's journey since the early stages of their search for the perfect site for their Eastern U.S. location. After considering many properties in several states, the company zeroed in on this 37-acre High Point site as the only North Carolina location still in the running. Locations in three other states were our competition. Recruiting a major company and sealing the deal are not done only through the efforts of economic developers. Joining our efforts are a team made up of elected officials, the city and county managers, city and economic development staff, High Point EDC chairs and board members, real estate professionals, workforce and training staff, construction professionals, utility representatives, and many more. An example of such teamwork occurred in March of 2018, when then High Point EDC Chair Darlene Leonard hosted an Amada delegation as we made our case on why High Point, Guilford County, and this site were the perfect place for this new project. Joining Amada officials and Darlene at that meeting were the staffs of the High Point Economic Development Corporation and the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce, High Point Council members, Jeff Golden and Jason Ewing, then Deputy City Manager, Randy McCaslin and representatives from the Guilford County Workforce Board and Guilford Technical Community College. At later meetings, company officials talked to several Guilford County commissioners and other High Point Council members. Our team successfully made the case that this site, this city, and this county would be the perfect place for Amada. The company then gave us the go ahead to proceed. So in April, 2018, I introduced the project at public hearings before the Guilford County Board of Commissioners and the High Point City Council. Both elected bodies unanimously authorized performance-based incentives for the Amada project. In May of 2018, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper announced that Amada had chosen High Point. A few weeks later, in June, Amada held a groundbreaking event, and I was honored to participate in the ceremonial Japanese sake barrel ceremony. 18 months later, in December of 2019, I joined Amada officials and Mayor Jay Wagner to cut the ceremonial ribbon to open the manufacturing building. And then, just last month, in October of 2020, Amada opened its second of three buildings on its High Point campus. This Technical Center building, the Technical Center, 
serves as a showroom and training center for the company's equipment. Now, let's watch an Amada video for a quick look at the company's High Point campus. As you saw, this is an amazing place and a remarkable manufacturing operation. What an asset Amada is for High Point and Guilford County. We are honored to have two Amada officials with us today to talk more about the company and this campus. Patrick Medlin is the Chief Manufacturing Officer for Amada America, not just for the High Point location, but for all of the United States, plus Mexico and Canada. In 2001, he co-founded Advanced Technology Sales and Service, which was a high point machine tool sale and service organization. He was president and CEO of that company until its merger with Amada America at the beginning of 2018. I'm now pleased to introduce you to Patrick Medlin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Patrick Medlin. I'm the Chief Manufacturing Officer for Amada America. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the 2020 annual meeting of the High Point Economic Development Corporation being held as a virtual event at the newly completed Amada America Carolina Technical Center. I'm standing in Amada Hall in that building. This auditorium is used mainly during our large customer events and shows to educate our customers about our company and the services that we provide. I thought it would be beneficial to do a brief recap of what has transpired over the last few years. An event took place on April 1st of 2018 that went virtually unnoticed by nearly everyone, with the exception of our friends at the Triad Business Journal that attempted unsuccessfully to reach me several times for comment. Sorry about that, guys. That event was Amada America's acquisition of their largest direct competitor in the Southeast, a small high point based company known as ATS or Advanced Technology Sales and Service. This was a partnership that was nearly two years in the making. Unbeknownst to your humble speaker, Amada was also contemplating and discussing some additional plans with the High Point Economic Development Corporation team. The possibility of a new 197,000 square foot manufacturing facility that would bring over 200 new jobs to the area 
once full productivity had been reached. Later, the plans were amended to include this beautiful new 62,000 square foot technical center, showroom, and training academy. And so, on an unseasonably warm day in June of 2018, city and county officials, business leaders, the High Point Economic Development Corporation, and senior management officials from AMADA, including our chairman, Mr. Okamoto, our senior managing director, Mr. Fukui, and our CEO, Mike Guerin, all gathered inside of a nice, large, and thankfully, air-conditioned tent located about 100 yards from where I'm speaking to you now to hold a groundbreaking ceremony. Gray Construction began moving dirt in late October of that year, and on December 6th of the following year, we hosted suppliers, city officials, and business leaders at our ribbon cutting ceremony for the manufacturing facility. The technical center was completed on September 18th of this year, and a virtual grand opening was held on October the 5th. Like all of you, we have faced unprecedented challenges this year with COVID-19, and we have had to adapt, learn, and change to this current environment with virtual demonstrations and virtual factory tours until things return to normal and we are able to fully utilize this facility for its designed and intended purposes. However, I am confident that things will return to normal and plans are already in place to host an in-person formal grand opening the first week of April next year. During the due diligence phase, several other sites in Illinois, Tennessee, and South Carolina were also considered, but for a myriad of reasons, including a skilled workforce, favorable local and state incentives, and a great working relationship with the High Point Economic Development Team, the City of High Point was ultimately chosen as Amada's new East Coast Manufacturing and Sales Hub. Throughout this entire process, the High Point Economic Development Corporation team and the City of High Point have been great and supportive partners and they have both been very accessible. I'm happy to report to you that this strong partnership continues on. In closing, I would like to say thank you to the Guilford County Commissioners, the High Point City Council, Lauren, Sandy, Marshall, and the entire team for their help and support and thank you for creating a pro-business environment that attracts world-class businesses and demonstrates how the relationships between businesses, local government, and the community should work. And Lauren, I wish you great success in your next chapter, and I commend you for a job well done representing High Point. Thank you so much, Patrick. The next Amada official is division manager Matthew Adkinson, who runs this new technical center. Like Patrick Medlin, Matthew was also a co-founder of Advanced Technology Sales and Service. Please join me in welcoming to the High Point EDC annual meeting, Matthew Adkinson. Hello, and welcome to Amada's newest campus. My name is Matthew Atkinson. I'm a division manager for Amada America. I manage and operate the Carolina Technical Center that we are broadcasting from today. I'd like to take this time to give you a little history on Amada and open a window into the day-to-day -day operation of the Carolina Technical Center. Amada Group was founded in 1948. Amada America was established in Seattle, Washington in 1971. Amada America has grown from a research and development company into the industry leader over the past almost 50 years. Our company's philosophy is growing together with our customers. One way this is achieved is through facilities like this. We believe in giving our guests great hospitality. From the time you enter the building, there is a certain tranquility. We want each person to come in, clear their mind, and focus on the reason for the visit. We want the customer to leave feeling as if they've had an experience, not just another machine demonstration. This is achieved by using areas like the Amada Hall, the 100-person auditorium that Patrick Medlin spoke to you from, or 
the 120 person dining area on the second floor. You can see behind me a 24,000 square foot showroom showcasing the latest manufacturing technology Amata has to offer. Salesmen schedule a demonstration. The hospitality staff and application engineers prepare for the visit. Customers see demonstrations on fiber lasers, turret punches, and press bricks. Most of the press brakes you see behind me now are manufactured on this campus here in High Point, North Carolina. Sales is not the only goal for the Technical Center. We have a vocational program called Amada Bending Academy. Through our customers, we discovered a need for properly trained press brake operators. This is a unique multi-level program requiring the student to qualify at the end, ensuring a high standard that employers can depend on. I've enjoyed working with my Japanese co-workers over the years. When helping them with a project or a problem, they like to use a phrase that translates well from their language to express their gratitude. Thank you for your support. This is what I would like to extend to the High Point Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Matthew, for showing us some of the amazing equipment being made by Amada here in High Point. Ladies and gentlemen, the City of High Point and our office pledged to Amada officials from the very beginning that our close working relationships won't end as these buildings come online. We have been and will continue to work closely with Amada as the company operates here. Thank you, Amada, for picking High Point, for hosting us today, and for letting the community get a sneak preview of this incredible campus. Among the definitions of extraordinary are beyond what is usual, exceptional in character or extent, and remarkable. Extraordinary is one of many words aptly describing the year 2020 with all that our city, region, state, and nation have faced. Amada is most certainly an extraordinary company. The word is used prominently at High Point University with its well-known choose to be extraordinary tagline, as well as a campus road and a campus theater with that word in their names. Extraordinary also describes the 20 years I've had working for the city of High Point and its economic development department. I've certainly experienced extraordinary times. The US has been in three recessions during my 20 years with the High Point ADC. I started this job in February 2001, and a recession officially began the next month. The dot-com recession is in the books as occurring from March 2001 to November 2001. Someone told me then that my timing was great. Starting the job in a recession was the best way to begin an economic development career because no one expected a seasoned economic developer to have many successes during a recession much less a brand new economic developer. The Great Recession was next, lasting from December 2007 to June 2009. Our office staff knew it was coming even before it was officially announced. In those days, our office's available real estate and building inventory files were in a file cabinet. Suddenly we had to get a second drawer since more and more buildings were on the market since they were not being leased or purchased. And of course, the pandemic recession began in February 2020 and continues today. I've been a part of extraordinary events and travel during these last 20 years. I had an amazing and successful meeting with officials with Ralph Lauren Corporation in their New York City headquarters to convince them to expand in High Point. I have had the good fortune to go on economic development trips throughout the United States. My foreign travel included my being part of North Carolina Department of Commerce trips to Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Switzerland. I joined the Piedmont Triad Partnership Delegation to Canada and had High Point EDC business travel to Sweden and China. Governors Bev Perdue, Pat McCrory, and Roy Cooper came to High Point to announce our office's projects 
as did three secretaries of the North Carolina Department of Commerce and their deputies. I've worked with extraordinary people during these 20 years. My special thanks go to the High Point City Council members and Guilford County Commissioners with whom I've worked. Fairly early in my time with the High Point EDC, a High Point City Council member at the time, and no, I won't say who it was, that person convinced me to stay the course when I was considering changing jobs. That council member steered me the right way at a time when that type of guidance was important for me. I owe that former elected official special appreciation. Thank you to the 10 dedicated chairs of the High Point EDC with whom I've worked and the many board members who have served during my time here. Thanks go to the developers and real estate professionals as well as the utility, workforce, and training allies with whom I've worked. The High Point Partners Business Group is no longer in existence, but back when it was active, the members of the High Point Partners were closely allied with our office. They appointed its members to fill some of our board seats. They had me take part in their board meetings. The High Point Partners helped fund our office's efforts. I have missed working with the High Point Partners, and our office has missed the leadership and private funding they provided. It's always dangerous to start thanking folks by name because I will no doubt leave out someone, but some folks are so important to me that I must highlight them by name. The first one is easy. I thank my wife, Joyce Hill, who has supported me impressively all through our 30 years of marriage. She and Guilford Technical Community College hosted several of our High Point EDC annual meetings back when she was department head of the culinary and hospitality programs. Joyce has been a cheerleader for our office and for me, and her encouragement has been invaluable. I appreciate very much being able to work with all six mayors who served High Point during my time with the city. Arnold Kuntz, Becky Smothers, Bernita Sims, Jim Davis, Bill Bensini, and our current mayor, Jay Wagner. I was fortunate that each of them was economic development focused. I'm appreciative of a former High Point EDC chair who held that role before I became EDC president. In 2001, Nito Cobain, who was not then the president of High Point University, gave me the best advice I received during my first year in this job. He told me about the importance of positively positioning an organization in the minds of the public and the media. He told me that doing a good job was not enough, that my job should also be to get the word out on what our office was doing. I took that advice to heart and tried to implement those suggestions throughout these last 20 years. Thank you, Nito. When thanking economic development colleagues in the region for working wonderfully and closely with our office, I have to point out in particular, Kenny Whitehart of the Piedmont Triad Partnership, Bonnie Renfro, who is now retired from the Randolph County EDC, Bob Leake, who used to be with Winston-Salem Business Inc., and Judy Stevens, who used to be with the Montgomery County Chamber. Brent Christensen of the Greensboro Chamber is in a category all to his own. After hearing of his hiring, I was skeptical of this out-of-state stranger before I met him five and a half years ago. That skepticism lasted till the moment he shook my hand with an earnest smile on his face and a we will work well together warmth. That collective and excellent working relationship has continued all this time. I couldn't have asked for a better neighboring colleague and friend. I've had the pleasure to work closely with some great High Point EDC staff members. Billy Marsh served our office faithfully and with a great customer service focus for more than 21 years before retiring. Billy served as our office's executive assistant. Linda Stokes was our office manager. Linda's smile and friendliness won everyone over, and we so enjoyed our time with her. Linda Frazier graciously agreed to come out of retirement for several months to assist our office, and I thank her for her dedication. Penny Westgard has now worked as our executive assistant for two years, and we are so very pleased she transferred from another city department to share her talents and city knowledge with the High Point EDC. Vice President Marshall Yandel is approaching his fifth anniversary with the High Point EDC. We got to know him even before he began that job. 
He served as an intern in our office for 10 months in 2008 and 2009, while he was completing his master's degree in public affairs from UNCG. He works hard and he keeps us laughing. For more than 14 and a half years, I've worked closely with Sandy Dunbeck, our office's executive vice president. My intent has been that she and I are interchangeable, meaning that she could fill in for me at any setting and at any time to ably represent our office. Having that kind of confidence in the staff member made my job easier and more enjoyable. And I thank Sandy. I've worked with many other wonderful city employees Three of them jumped to the top of that list. Cindy Smith, who recently retired from the city manager's office. Alice Smith-Moore, who used to be the city's public information officer. And Jerron Hollis, the current director of the communications and public engagement department. I must thank the three city managers to whom I have reported. My boss today is Randy McCaslin, who is now serving his second stint as interim city manager. Randy has worked well and closely with me and our office all during his service in the city manager's office as interim manager, as deputy manager, and as assistant city manager. Randy never fails to give me a good natured ribbing, and I enjoy laughing with him as we get the job done. As Carlos said earlier, former city manager Greg Dimko supported me, our staff, and my office completely. He often said some incredibly gracious comments about our office's work at public meetings. And if I ever need a reference, he'll be the first one I'll go to. When he began as city manager, Greg accepted and trusted me right away, though he hadn't hired me. I am grateful to him. Strip Boynton is a city manager who hired me. I thank him, but I also want to tell a story about his hiring me. I did not apply for this job, nor had I ever thought about being an economic developer. This job had never crossed my mind. I had been a Marriott Hotel General Manager, a Government Affairs Public Affairs Director for the real estate industry, and a Chamber of Commerce Executive. In the fall of 2000, I was working at the Greensboro Chamber. I received a call from Strib. He said, I'd like you to come talk to me about the Economic Development President position. That very morning, a High Point Enterprise article's headline had said something close to, EDC President to be named this week. I quoted that headline to him, and he said, don't believe everything you read in the newspaper. I was told that Strib and the search committee had done a national search that produced 60 applicants. They interviewed finalist candidates, but weren't satisfied enough to make an offer. They decided to continue the search. Strib said to me that he got the idea that I would be a good candidate for the job one morning at home after the search was officially restarted. He had somewhat known me for a few months in 1998 when I overlapped with him briefly when he began as city manager and I was then the government affairs director for several real estate trade associations. I had attended every High Point City Council meeting. After I left that job a few months later to go work for the Greensboro Chamber and was no longer attending High Point City Council meetings, I interacted with Strib in Washington, D.C. He had seen me in charge of an event in the U.S. Capitol when the Greensboro and High Point Chambers of Commerce brought their leadership teams to Washington to meet with our senators and representatives. Strib was attending as part of the High Point Chamber delegation. And he said later that he was impressed by the way I ran that event. As the phone conversation continued, I said to Strib, I am not an economic developer. I'm around it here in my job with the Greensboro Chamber, and I attend the Economic Development Department's staff meetings, but I'm not in their business though. I don't do economic development. He said, come talk to me. Lauren, anyone is going to have a learning curve in a job. If we hired a seasoned economic developer, that person is going to have to learn the politics, the real estate community, the geography, and all those kinds of things. You already know those things well. You lobbied city government in High Point, he said. You have a relationship with the city council members here already. You were an elected official as a Jamestown councilman. You already have a working relationship with many of the city department heads from your time as government affairs director for your clients. You know the real estate community because you worked on their behalf. You know the geography because you're a High Point native. So, Streb said, your learning curve will be in economic development. You'll be no different than anyone else coming into the position. You'll have a learning curve. It'll just be in a different way. 
come talk to me, he said again. The more we talked on the phone, the more I was intrigued by what I was hearing. We made an appointment, and I was soon meeting with Strip Boynton and then Mayor Arnold Coons. And here we are 20 years later. And thanks to Strib and Arnold and the search committee, I've had the best job I could have imagined, even though I never applied for it. Extraordinary times to navigate through, extraordinary events and trips to enjoy and learn from, extraordinary and supportive people with whom I have been honored to work. I've been fortunate and I am grateful for my 20 years with the High Point EDC. Lauren, we appreciate hearing about the extraordinary times of your High Point EDC career these last 20 years. To our board members, elected officials, and visitors, I would be negligent if I didn't tell you what he didn't say. Lauren has made a difference and a positive contribution to our community and to the economic development profession. Lauren worked successfully with his team on 127 major projects and countless smaller ones in the High Point city limits, as well as on other projects in other parts of Guilford County. We've already heard about his efforts leading to two international awards from the Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. Lauren's work in writing and editing our High Point EDC annual reports and other promotional materials led to the High Point EDC receiving more than 15 economic development awards from the International Economic Development Council or the Southern Economic Development Council. He served faithfully on the board of directors of the Southern Economic Development Council, as well as on the board of the North Carolina Economic Development Association. In August of 2020, the Greensboro Chamber acknowledged Lawrence's efforts in an impressive way. Here now is an awards announcement video that was shown at the Greensboro Chamber's State of Our Community event. We showed this video at our September High Point EDC board meeting, but I'm sure our board members won't mind seeing it again. Both Greensboro Chamber President Brett Christensen and I want to be sure our guests at today's annual meeting get a chance to see it. This award video opens with Brent Christensen. Up next is our first award presentation of the afternoon, the 2020 Stanley Frank Economic and Workforce Development Award. Stanley Frank was a longtime benefactor and champion of Greensboro. As a trustee of Guilford College, he believed in the importance of education in the future of our community. It is an honor for the Greensboro Chamber to present this award to celebrate the memory of one of Greensboro's most celebrated business leaders and philanthropists. The Stanley Frank Economic and Workforce Development Award is presented annually to a leader who has worked in support of building a better Greensboro and Guilford County. Throughout my five years in Greensboro, I have worked closely with this year's winner, Lauren Hill, and seen firsthand his drive, his dedication, and the love that he has for our community. Lauren and I met before I ever started at the Greensboro Chamber, and he accepted me immediately. It's pretty amazing considering I'm a Dukie and he's a Tar Heel. He's a friend, a mentor, and quite simply, one of the best economic developers I have ever met. Please join me in learning more about the 2020 Stanley Frank Economic and Workforce Development Award winner, Mr. Lauren Hill. Lauren is really good at navigating uh, unexpected challenges and really being creative and helps everyone find uh, the right path to a good solution. The Guilford County Economic Development Alliance has today become a huge success. It is a model for economic development on a regional level uh, and has won many awards from all over the country. What a lot of people don't know is that Lauren really was the individual who put the blueprint together, who developed the concept that was acceptable for the city of Greensboro, the city of High Point and Gilbert County to, to move forward. Lauren and the group there were wanting to pull the communities together. They knew that we would be stronger together than we were apart. I think Lauren's legacy in the High Point area is his 20 years of servant leadership. He has been so good at bringing companies to the area 
but then keeping them connected to the area so that they're engaged and feel part of the community. And then they in turn want to help other businesses come to the area and find out what is so wonderful about uh, Guilford County and the triad so that they can be part of it. When I first met him, I was like, who is this man? You know, he's so good and he's such a um, supportive to, to the community to have such a leader. He's such a great person for, for our community because we really need them. You deserve nothing but the best and it's such an honor to have you to receive this award. Congratulations, Lauren Hill. This is so well deserved and I'm so happy to see you receive this award. Congratulations, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren, so very, very much for all that you have done for the city of High Point, for the city of Greensboro, for Guilford County, and for our entire region. To say I was overwhelmed when I learned of this honor would be quite the understatement, since all but one of the previous 18 recipients are directly identified with Greensboro. It's not a tribute to me as much as it is recognition of our successful countywide efforts over the last five years. The High Point Economic Development Corporation, working hand in hand with the Greensboro Chamber, the County of Guilford, the City of Greensboro, and the City of High Point. I sincerely thank you, the Greensboro Chamber members, leadership, board of directors, and staff for this amazing honor. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks, thank bye. You. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Congratulations again, Lauren. And let me be the first to say, we congratulate you on your retirement as well. We're gonna miss you in this community and I know you're just moving on to the next chapter, but working with you on a daily basis has been fantastic. I'm gonna miss you personally and we're looking forward to the next phase in your life. Lauren, congratulations once again for that honor. And I thank the Greensboro Chamber for recognizing his efforts. Due to the pandemic, we won't be having a reception for Lauren when he retires January 1st, 2021. He intends to find new work, most likely in the economic development field. So thank you for indulging me as I made this tribute part of our annual meeting to help somewhat serve as his farewell reception. Ladies and gentlemen, we very much appreciate your joining us as we celebrated our accomplishments, our board members, our staff members, our elected officials, our allies, in our Guilford County Economic Development Alliance. Congratulations, Chris Rivera, on your promotion this past year to your current leadership role, and thank you for your presentation about Guilford Works and our Workforce Board. Thank you, Lacey Beasley, for being a dynamic and informative feature speaker at our annual meeting for two years in a row. Thank you, Patrick Medlin and Matthew Atkinson of Amada for your remarks, your virtual tour, and for hosting us today. We are so proud that Amada chose High Point. We appreciate you for joining us today. The 2020 virtual annual meeting of the High Point Economic Development Corporation is adjourned.